In part three of our online video, Introduction to Optics and Lens Design, I'm going to talk about using a modern computer program, which is really an important part of lens design. Every computer program does things differently, and the program you use will it, uh, determines to a large extent um, how you go about the process. Um, so far in the previous uh, lessons, we've covered the basics, the nature of image aberrations, how to recognize them, first order or paraxial optics, and the limitations due to diffraction. Now your job as a lens designer is going to be to understand the imaging goals uh, and to have some, uh, some idea of what kind of lens uh, will do the job. But the details can mostly be left to the computer. Now that wasn't true these, uh, uh, about 50 years ago because then you had to steer the design every step of the way. It was a huge amount of work. Uh, and that, that's a lot easier now because computers do so much of the work. So be glad you have modern, powerful tools. Now to illustrate this power and to show how to use it, <coughs> I'm going to use the what's called the Synopsis <coughs> Lens Design Program. It's an acronym. It means Synthesis of Optical Systems. Now, if you haven't done so, <coughs> please go to my website and download, um, uh, download and install the program so you can follow along with, uh, with, with these lessons. To start with, we're going to enter the data for a singlet lens, which can be done in, in three different ways. You can use a spreadsheet, which some people like. You can use the macro editor, EE. Or you can use the worksheet. And uh, let me illustrate these. Here's the lens, first of all. We're going to have a radius of 50 millimeters on both sides, thickness of 5, and a glass type from, uh, from the shot catalog. OK, start the program. Double click on the icon, <coughs> and you, if you don't have a license, you get a message that the hardware key was not found. So you want to select, let me run the program with a limit of 12 surfaces. <coughs> now the next slides show how to enter this singlet with uh, the spreadsheet, which works, uh, but it's an awful lot of clicking and, and entering things. It, it's, I find it very slow and cumbersome, so I prefer to use the excellent editor, EE. So I'm going to do it both ways, and, and then you can see the difference. Okay, at the command window, uh, when the command window opens, you type SPS, spreadsheet, uh, or you can click the, the there's a, a button that does the same thing. It opens the spreadsheet, which looks like this. Now you're going to type some data into the boxes. You're going to type the number, the radii 50 and minus 50, and the thickness of 5. Uh, so far, there's only two surfaces defined, uh, plus the object at surface 0. We need to make surface 3. Uh, exists. So you want to click on the line for surface 3 and then click the little plus sign. Now surface 3 exists and that's going to be the image surface. <coughs> uh, we have to define the system data now. So click the system data button and you can give it an ident identification. Select millimeters. Give it the semi-field angle and semi-aperture and then click <coughs> the edit surface data button. Now you need to define the glass type. So you click here <coughs> on surface uh, 1. Another window opens. You can click uh, the glass table, select the shot catalog, enter the glass name, click OK, and then close. Okay, now the glass is defined. But you haven't defined the back focus distance yet. So do you have to do that? Click here in the box for surface uh, 2 th thickness. Another window opens. And you then click Edit Solves. We're going to add a, add a solve to this lens. I'll explain that in a minute. Um, the box opens. You select the YMT and then click OK and Close. Okay, now the singlet is fully defined. You see it here in the picture. But let me talk about that YMT. That's an example of what we call a, a paraxial thickness solve. It finds the thickness T such that the height y of the marginal ray m will be at, at the requested value, which is zero in this case. In other words, surface 3 is going to be at the paraxial focus. Now there are many kinds of solves, and whenever you want to learn about one, or read about any other term which I use in this tutorial, oh, use the help file. It's really easy. It's very quick. For example, you can type in the command window, help ymt, and the, the help file opens, and you can read YMT gives an explanation. OK, that was easy, although I find it somewhat tedious. So now let's enter the same lens with the excellent editor. 
type EE in the command window, and then type these data here into that window. Then click the Run button. Now, isn't that easy? That's all you need to duplicate all that work that you did clicking and, 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 and entering things in, um, in the spreadsheet. So all that work can be avoided with a simple file. And this shows you why I prefer to use the, the editor to uh, enter a lens file. It's really much quicker and easier. So the macro runs, and you see uh, some results from the paraxial ray trace. And here's your lens. OK, well, that was the hardest part of learning to use synopsis. Now type pad in the command window, or click the, the pad button. It opens the sketch pad. And, aha, I see aberrations. Can you see them? I see uncorrected spherical aberration. I see uncorrected primary axial color. Right there. If you look at these curves, it's, it's in focus at the center of the aperture, but the edge of the aperture is out of focus, and that's, that's spherical aberration. And you notice the colors 1 and 3, that's the, uh, the, the red and the blue, um, are separated. That's the axial color. Now, we looked at that with the sketch pad, which is the primary graphical interface for uh, synopsis. That lets you see the lens and the image in a whole bunch of different formats. Uh, you can watch it change as you optimize. And you can even alter the lens with the worksheet. Let's try some exercises with the worksheet, just to show um, how that works. Uh, um, in the pad, uh, pad toolbar, you'll see some, some buttons. So you click there, that's the worksheet button. The worksheet opens, <coughs> showing the input data for the system. Now you want to click on Surface 1 in the pad display. And when you do that, the uh, edit pane uh, shows the data, the input data for Surface 1. And you can change any of these numbers. And when you click the up Update button, you see how the lens changed. OK, just for practice, click the Checkpoint button and then change the first radius to 50 and click Update. OK, the lens has changed. Now click the Restore button and the lens comes back. Now, if, if you're confused at this point, I'm going to do it in real time and you can watch. I'm going to click up here, right there, that's the Checkpoint button. I'm going to change that 100 to a 50, type of 5. Click Update and there the lens has changed. And now I'm going to click the, res the Restore button and it comes back again. Okay, you've seen the basics. Now let's try to improve this singlet. And we're going to use the optimization program for this. Now that program uh, is a real workhorse. It can be used for all kinds of things, not just improving the image. You can vary almost anything in the lens and give a target to almost anything. Uh, and this it's usually done with a macro, because you can create, save, modify, and run it as often as you want. Uh, first, let's save the singlet. So we can go back to it if we want to. Type in the command window, store 3. That saves the lens file in location 3 of the lens library. Well, what's the lens library? It's a convenient place to store up to 10 lenses. It has the virtue that many features of Synopsys can read and write to those locations automatically, which makes it real handy. Um, you can also save any number of lenses on disk, save, and in fact, you give it a file name. OK, we're going to make an optimization macro, which has a special format. It has a, a section called pant, which is going to define the, the, uh, the variables, and a section called ant, which is going to define the merit function. And by the way, these sections are separate. They're never part of the lens description. They're the separate files. Now, the ant section can include all kinds of things that apply to a, a given ray, uh, mechanical constraints, just, just a whole bunch of stuff you can put in there. And you can have thousands of those in the merit function. It's a very, it's a very flexible program. And then, of course, the optimization commands. <coughs> so first, let's um, erase the macro you made before. Click the Erase Macro button. And then type this, this new stuff into the macro editor. Now, in the pants section, that's going to define the variables. In the ant section, that, that, that's going to be your merit function. Uh, the snapshot command makes the pad display update, which you can watch it change, which is always, always fun to do. And then the synopsis command uh, starts the optimization. OK. <clears throat> Let's use something a little silly, but it will show something important. So this is worth doing. In the pants section, um, uh, define two variables, surface 1 radius, and you get a very surface 2 radius. And we're going to have only two aberrations in the ant file, uh, just for this little exercise here. So ask for a value of 100 for the focal length, and ask for a value of 0 for the comma. And then run it for 20 iterations. Um, 
the bunch of, there are the m many different formats for, for the aberrations. These are called individual requests, and you read them as follows. You say minimize, that's M, to a target of 100 with a weight of 1, add the focal length to the list. That's that one. And the next one says minimize to a target of 0 with a weight of 1, add comma to the third order comma to the list. That's that one. Okay, now click the Run button, and this thing runs. Mirror function comes down, we're pretty close to zero, and we want to see how to turn out. So you type the command final in the command window, and you see it's got two aberrations, and they both uh, met, met their goals. The focal length came out to 100, and the comma came out to zero. Well, that's almost zero. It's, it's close enough for our purposes. Okay, now you know the procedure. So let's let's try to improve this lens for real. We're, we're gonna we're gonna add a second element with the worksheet. We're gonna free up the material on that element because it comes in with a pickup. We'll create a proper merit function and then optimize the lens. Okay, here we go. Here's your lens. It has only one element. We want to add another element to it. For, first of all, click the restore button if you didn't do that already. So here's our lens. <clears throat> Open the worksheet and you want to select the insert element button. Then you want to click just behind the first element. I'll do it here in real time so you can watch. Click the, the button, click on the axis. There you go. Now, you've just added an element to the lens with the worksheet. But the program has no information yet for the index of, of that new element, so it assigned a pickup of the index of element 1. <coughs> but, uh, but we don't want that. We have to get rid of that. If you type POP in the command window, You'll see a list of this uh, print options. You'll see surface 3 has a pickup index of surface 1. So we, we have to get rid of that. And there, there are a bunch of ways to do that. See, that's index pickup. OK, let's, let's remove that. You can do it with a change file. You can type chg in the command window and then surface 3. No index option. That'll take it off. Or in the worksheet, you can type 3 and IOP. And that works too. Or you can click Surface 3, and then in the Worksheet Toolbar, you click a button, and then that goes to another dialog. You click the Pickup Index, and you click um, Delete Pickup. Okay. All three ways work, and either way, Surface 3 is now free to vary. Okay, now you want to change your macro. Change to put a VList Radius All, which will vary all radii that aren't flat and don't pick up another value. All those that are free are going to be varied now. And you want to, in the um, in, in the merit function instruction, in the end file, put the cursor right there, and then click on the toolbar button the, the for the ready-made race sets. That's going to display a list of um, handy merit functions. Uh, number six is is really handy, and that's 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 so useful. That's the default. So just uh, accept that. Click back to macro editor, and now your macro looks like this. The uh, automatic uh, uh, merit function has added some things to, to it here. It's added AEC, that's the automatic edge control, that's so edges don't get too thin. It's added an ACC, automatic center thickness control, that's so lenses don't get too thick. And it added three of these requests which generate a, a, a grid of rays uh, to uh, correct the image quality. Now you can, you can add individual rays to the merit function if you want, but you don't usually have to because these ray grids are usually a, a very good start uh, starting a merit function. Let's explain the GSR and GNR requests. If you look in the manual, this is how they're defined. GSR, generate sagittal rays. There are two weighting factors, a grid number and the color. This is the primary color for P. And that means the GSR is a grid of rays just in the sagittal fan, in this case, in this case five rays. The picture shows three. The GNR is to generate ray sets, uh, which works over both X and Y. There's some weighting factors here. I said a grid of three, multicolor, so it'll do all the defined colors, and at the seven-tenths field. Let me explain these weighting factors. The 0.5 and 10 means, well, uh, the first first one <clears throat> tells you how you want to weight the rays over the aperture. If that number were zero, it says weight rays everywhere in the aperture with the, um, equally. If you put in a 0.5 like this, it says, well, rate the center somewhat more heavily than the edges. And if you put in a higher number, say one, it, well, it rates the center, it uh, weights the center even more heavily. And this, this is a good thing to um, experiment with. Um, 
the, the correct number in here can help you improve the resolution of your lens. So 0.5 is, is a good starting value. Uh, that's why we're using it here. Uh, over here we had a 0.5 and a 2. That's another weighting factor. In this case, the weighting, the, the weighting factor, the second one here, applies to all the rays in the aperture equally. So we're rating them by where they are in the aperture and then weighting the whole, the whole business by the second weighting factor, in this case, 2. Okay, that's going to be our macro. Uh, let, let's make some more, more changes to it. I'll put a log command at the top. That just helps to keep track of things later. I'm going to put a store command here. Uh, it makes a safety copy, so if you really screw up, you can always get your lens back in, um, out of the library. And I'm going to add a new set of variables, a variable list, GLM, services 1 and 3, is the glass model variable. The program will vary the, the index and the Abbey number anywhere it wants on the glass chart, and it'll tell you where you want to go in the glass chart. Okay, that's your optimization macro, which you can really set up very quickly once you know how. Now make a checkpoint and run it. And this is the result. You see, on axis, the aberrations are much better. But the lens still has astigmatism and field curvature. Can you spot that? These two slopes are different, so there's astigmatism. And the average is not zero, so there's field curvature. All right, that's a simple exercise just to show you how, how things work. Now we're going to do a more complex design. A five element lens focal length of 50, f3.5, field of 14, and so on. Now, how do you approach a problem like that? Well, I, I, can, I can identify five different ways that you might do it. You can go and search a patent database, which takes a whole lot of time. You can look in your own files or previous designs. If you have one that's, that's, that's um, pretty close, well, you're all set. If you don't have one, you're out of luck. You can do a third order design by hand, and, and some people still like to do that, but that's a huge amount of work. You can play it by ear, that's, that's kind of fun to do sometimes, or you can let the computer do the work, and I really like that last one. But just to illustrate, I'm going to do it both ways. I'm going to use number four, first of all. Try option four. Play it by ear, Sam. We're going to add our lens based, <clears throat> based on intuition. On a napkin, I'm going to just sketch some lenses. I'm going to guess values for the radius, thickness, and index. And here's my well guess. Radius 100, radius 200, and so on. I'm going to guess the value for the index and the Abbey number. This will put the, the glass model variable right in the middle of the glass chart. Now, the glass model can move anywhere it wants on the glass table, and it'll tell you where you want to be on the glass, um, on the glass chart. And I'm going to enter an object type B. There are many object formats. Object format B has these arguments. And if you look in the help file, it's described like this. <clears throat> the first argument, UMP0, <clears throat> is the angle of the marginal ray coming in, which is 0, which means the object is at infinity. The second argument is the chief ray angle coming in, which is 14 degrees. And the third argument, YMP1, is the height of the, com of the marginal ray coming in, which is the, the semi-aperture of the entering beam. Okay, that describes the object uniquely. Now you want to type these data into the macro editor and click the run button. And here's what comes back. This is our wild guess. It's not too good, but hey, the light gets through. <clears throat> now we're going to optimize this lens. To do that, you want to open a new editor. You click the new editor button and type these data into the editor window. You want a very a very list, variable list, radius all, thickness all, and glass models all. You're going to correct the focal length, let's say 150. The back focus, I suppose you want that to be 16. Now I'm going to put the cursor right there and get choice number 6 from the ready-made merit functions, which is right here. And again, the program has added the automatic uh, edge control, automatic center control, and three sets of ray aberrations. Now what was that LUL all about? Well, it means limit upper limit of 250 with a weight of 1 and a window of 1 and you're going to control the total the total length. That's vertex to vertex, front to back. This is a one-sided aberration. That is, the total length can get smaller, but it can't get larger. These are very useful. You can have an, uh, uh, an upper limit and a lower limit on an aberration. Very handy. Okay, you run the macro, and the lens is much improved. Now it's time to try simulated annealing. What's simulated annealing? Well, after optimization, it's always a good idea to run that because um, 
uh, in lens design, you'll find lenses frequently get stuck in what's called a local minimum. That is, the quality has a, a minimum point, but it's not very good. The uh, simulated annealing makes a set of small random changes, which just bounces it out of there, and then it can go downhill and find a better minimum. And if you bounce out of that, you can find an even better one. Uh, and it's a real good thing to do. I use it all the time. Um, so when you do this, you click the button for simulated annealing. Enter some data, let's say a temperature of 50 and say 40 passes. Click OK. And now the lens has changed and it's, and it's really much better. This works so well, I, I use it all the time. Except that you'll notice the edge of the field has rather poor color correction. Well, when you design lenses, most of the time you're looking at what went wrong and then modifying the merit function. That's what we do. We don't design lenses anymore, we design merit functions. And right now, I want you to increase the weight of the, of the ray grid at full field from 1 to 4 and run that macro again. And by the way, I always make a checkpoint between optimization stages. Okay, uh, not bad, and this is from a wild guess starting point. It's really a quite, quite a good lens. But there, we, the, no, there's some knowledge there too, because when I started, I put the stop in the middle, so it, this is something like symmetry, which has some benefits. And I, the lenses were bent in the same direction that um, we uh, used to minimize spherical aberration um, uh, back in lesson one. Okay, now let's do it another way. With a modern lens design program, now, there are tools that never existed before where they'll make the computer do most of the work, and I really love making the computer do all the work. So you can make system-level decisions, but let the computer work out the details. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to use D-Search, Design Search Program. You type MDS, Menu Design Search, and you fill in some data. This tells the program what kind of lens you want. You give it an identification, uh, semi-field angle, semi-aperture, how many elements, F number, and so on. Fill in all these boxes. And then when you click OK, it asks you for a file name. You s let's give it a name, say dsearch5.mac, which looks like this. It's got all the input you need to run the dsearch program to get exactly the lens that you asked for. And if you have a multi-core PC, well, you want to put a core command at the top. It makes it run much faster. Now, if when, you, when you run this, when you run this, it comes back and shows the 10 best lenses that it found. <coughs> and usually the top one is the best, but sometimes the others are pretty good, so they're worth looking at too. Okay, this is the top one that it found, with no starting design at all. And now we're going to optimize this. Well, DSearch automatically created an optimization macro, which is real handy. It put the variables in for the radio thickness glass models, and um, I noticed that, that that lens that came back had edges a little thinner than I like, so I'm going to increase the uh, the target for the edge control to 3 millimeters. And some of the center thicknesses were a little thin, so I'm going to change the ACC to an ACM, which is an automatic center minimum control, to 3 millimeters. And I want to increase the weight on the edge of the field, too, so let's put a 4 on that weighting factor. Then we'll run it and anneal it, and now this is what comes back. It's a rather good lens. And this illustrates a basic truth. For any complex design, there are usually many different solutions that have almost the same quality. So you can't really say you're going to find the best solution. What you want to do is find a very good solution. OK, well, we're not quite done. We're going to do one more step. The lens has model glass types. So we want to run the menu real glass type, MRG. It opens a dialog. You select, the say, the O'Hara catalog, preferred glasses, click OK. And, um, oh yes, MRG has to be run immediately <coughs> after a normal optimization uh, because it uses the same variables and the same merit function. Okay, so we run this, and the ARG comes back and says, I've replaced the glass elements with uh, these glasses from the, uh, the O'Hara catalog. Now, this is about as good as we're probably going to do with five elements uh, with these specifications. Okay, here's what we got. Two potential solutions. One I got by doing a sketch on a napkin. One I got by running D-Search, and they're very different designs. But they're look at the quality, almost the same for both lenses. And I produce these in only a few minutes. These modern tools can work so much faster than the old ones that I really want you to learn about them. OK, that was a brief lesson in how to use modern lens design software. Of course, it never hurts to know something about lens design theory. But today, the computer does most of the work. 
and it can often find solutions that a third order study cannot find. Now the next lessons will focus on particular problems and show how to solve them. And thank you for your attention.